What's up everybody, The Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. In this video, we will be going over <laughs> route leaking in Mikrotik or router OS in order to route traffic between different VRFs. It's a very interesting concept and topic. Uh, it's something that I use in my, I don't wanna say day to day, but I mean, when you're setting up a new VRF and you need to do some special stuff, it's something that you need to know how to do. So if you're working in the ISP environment, if you're a network engineer or architect or even administrator with a bit more responsibility, then this is definitely the video for you. I do highly encourage you again, if you learn anything new from the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel and comment. Funny enough, YouTube algorithm <laughs> promotes videos that gets more comments. So please comment on the video as well. I'd appreciate that. And yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so what is route <laughs> leaking? So route leaking involves, uh, or it's, it's basically like a mechanism that allows us as network engineers, or architects, administrators to route traffic between different VRFs, which is really exciting because there's so much that you can do with this. Um, in a previous video, we set up a VRF, like throughout a whole ISP network so that two customer sites could like get to each other in one VRF over MPLS, which was really cool. And also in another video, we did VRF Lite, where we set up a LAN and a phone network on one specific CPE. So let's quickly focus on that for now. So we'll look at this client one HQ and our LAN range, our, our computers are on the 192.168.20.0 slash 24 subnet. And let's say our PABX vendor, they came through, they wanted to actually install the phones now, but they realized, hey, but we actually need web access to these phones. We need to be able to get to them when we're connected on our laptops or our computers so that we can actually program the things. But it doesn't necessarily mean you want people on like a printer or, or some other VRF to still be able to get there. So what we want to do is enable the people from this 192.168.20.0 slash 24 range to get to 10.100.00 slash 25 so that the people can actually use it and configure it over the web GUI and whatnot. Um, <laughs> so let's quickly do that. And this is actually pretty simple to do. We'll just do it on the CPE and we're going to do it on Winbox. But what I want to first show you is prove to you that it doesn't work. So let's quickly jump onto the LAN machine. And from the LAN machine, and this is just a Docker for Eve, but we're going to assume it's a LAN PC. And it's the same for the phone. It's also just the Eve Docker. So let's quickly check here. Can I actually ping 10 100 0.50, which is the IP address of the phone? No. Okay, now let's quickly jump onto the phone as well. So from the phone, Let's go into our terminal and from the phone, can I ping 10, no, 192.168.20.100, which is the LAN PC? No, I cannot. So these two hosts aren't able to get to each other. Reason being they are in separate VRF. So let's verify that by actually going onto the router. So I'm going to go into my CPE one, which is the router at the client one HQ. And then if I maximize this and I go into my IP routes, remember I've got my VRF here and there's my VRF phones and it's got my phone interfaces. So what we want to do is essentially just go into our IP firewall because we're gonna use the firewall to leak the routes. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our mangles. And this is why I love Mikrotik so much. There is so much you can do on the mangle function of the firewall. <laughs> it's so cool. Anyway, so we're just going to click on the plus and from the plus, let's just specify something. This will be a pre-routing chain. And we just need to say anything coming from 10 dot 100. Actually, let's reverse it first. Let's say the people wanting to come from 192.168.20.0 slash 24. Um, <laughs> Uh, they want to go to 10.100.0.0 slash 25. And what I need to specify is I'm going to go to my action and I'm going to just say 
mark routing and then I can update the routing mark of the packets. And so this is actually how I'm leaking the route and I'm going to say it's going to be the VRF phones. So anything wanting to come from my LAN range, wanting to go to the phone range, I'm going to inject that into the VRF phones. Similarly to routing, I just need to set up a return policy or a return rule. And what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to say anything coming from 10.100.0.0 slash 25 wanting to go to my LAN subnet 192.168.20.0 slash 24 I'm not going to specify anything here um, actually I can I can say the routing or the routing mark is VRF phones because that's what it's currently in when the packet arrives on the router and what I'm going to do is with the action I'm going to mark my routing again and that routing will be part of the main routing the main routing table which is where my phone network is in so I'm just going to apply that. Now I've got my two rules. So if I jump back onto my two machines, which I've been RDP'd on, here's the phone, here's the LAN, there you see. And from the LAN, let's see, can I actually ping 10 100 Wow, I can ping it. And from the phone, can I ping the LAN? Yes, I can ping it. And that is because of these rules that we've implemented. There you can see that the rules are actually getting hit. So it's marking these packets, putting them in different VRFs. So we've effectively, effectively leaked the routes between the phone and the LAN VRFs so that the machines can communicate so that our PABX vendor or um, person can come and configure the phones. Now, if they're done, we can take it away. But if the access needs to remain, then we can just leave it as is. Now let's do another fun activity <laughs> involving route leaking. And what we're going to do is actually go onto our ISP network. Cause if I, if you don't, if you recall, when we set up this VRF for this customer over the MPLS, they could get to each other's sites, but they couldn't actually get internet breakout. And that's because we didn't get a way for these, for this VRF to break out to the internet. If I go onto my PE2, and I look at to that routing table, you'll see what I mean in a second. So just jump onto PE2 and let me just close all the windows, go into my IP routes, find customer one. And there we go, there's the customer one routes. It's being learned, but there's no default route. There's no way for this to break out. So the CPEs, the client routers are getting default routes to bring them into the ISP network, but from the ISP network, it doesn't know how to break out. Now me, as the network engineer or architect, I know at my ASBR, I've actually got an internet link coming in and I've extended the customer's VRF also to this router. There's actually this whole mesh network going on here where all these routers know about customer one's VRF. So let's also climb onto that uh, ASBR. Actually, I won't connect to it on Romon. I actually need to connect to it directly. So let's do that. Now I'm on the ASBR. And on the ASBR, if I go to my IP routes, here you see I've got the VRF for the customer one. It's got no interfaces, but it doesn't need one in this case because I've spanned it through BGP signaling. If I go to my routes, I am learning routes for the customer. So I know how to get to the customer's LAN subnets, 20.0 24 and 30.0 slash 24 and I know how to get to the link IPs so the IP is configured between my ISP network and the CPE so here's gonna be the cool part and this is actually so silly any VRF can reference the main routing table by just adding an at you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second so basically if I go to my main routing table there is a route there zero 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 slash zero to break out to the internet using this 74.2 IP. So that IP is reachable from the main routing table. If I go back to customer one, what I could do is I could click on the plus, I could add the default route as well. And if I specify the gateway, I can also do 192.168.74.2. And then what you do because you need to reference the main routing table. If you don't reference it, this route is just going to not really do anything. So we're just going to say add main. That's it. I'm going to apply that. And I am redistributing this default route already. 
but let, let's go in there I'm in my BGP I'm redistributing static routes and connected routes and all that stuff so if I go back to PE2 which is the router that's connected to this branch one if I go there I can see I'm learning a default route now and it's through BGP so effectively if I go into my terminal and I do a ping 8.8.8.8 .8 and the routing table is customer one I've got breakout fantastic but it, it's we're not done yet we want to make sure that the customer has breakout so if you look the customer has this 192.168.30.0/24 LAN subnet so let's jump onto this LAN 2 PC which is the customer's computer that they're using to obviously break out to the internet and I'm going to go into my system tools and terminal. Let's see, do I have internet breakout from the customer? No, it's timing out. And if I do a trace route, trace route to 8.8.8.8, let's just minus D that. Uh, trace route. I can see it goes to my CPE. And then I'm just starting to get some timeouts. So actually, this should be on the MPLS network. So what I'm going to do now is on the ASBR, where I know that I'm learning or redistributing a default route from, I'm going to do one simple change. I'm going to do, go into my IP routes. And you could do this with a mangle as well, but I want to show you. If you go to IP routes, there's the rules. Rules effectively works like Mangle as well. It's just a lot more straightforward. So in the rules, we can click on the plus. And what we could say is anything coming from 192.168.30.0 slash 24. That's inside the customer one routing mark. We're going to do a lookup against main. And then remember the mangle on the flip side, we're going to say anything that wants to go to 192.168.300. And this is actually the, the important policy. So if my main routing table wants to get to the customer's LAN address, then what I can do is do a lookup against the customer's VRF. I'm going to apply that. And then if I jump back to the customer's machine, it should be this LAN 2. I'm trying to ping to 8888 I'm getting breakout now and I know this might be confusing if you're you're new to the field or if you're just watching the video so I'm not trying to confuse you but basically what's happening the customer's land range is being learned on PE2 and then PE2 is redistributing that land range to this ASBR so it's learning about the customer's land range at my edge where my internet link is actually coming in and now I am using route leaking in order to learn how to get to the customer's LAN range. So you typically won't use the customer's LAN range. What you'll find what most uh, network engineers would do is you just net the traffic out somewhere along the line. And then you'd use that netted address to actually give them breakout at the edge so that you don't interfere if, if there is another customer also using that same subnet with the VRF. Cool. So that is the second type of route leaking we can do. The third is a little bit more advanced and I might make a separate video for it. And that's where we route leak using VRF. So I am actually going to make a different video on that. I'm not going to cover it here. It's going to take too long. But I want to express another thing why route le leaking is very useful. Because if I had a range of public IP addresses, what I could effectively do is if I wanted to assign an IP address to a customer to give them their own breakout, I could use route leaking as well, where I could assign a public IP address like dot one three two. If that was also on my ASBR, I could NAT that IP address down to the customer's router or to a server of theirs or something. And I would use the route leaking for that as well. Cool. So I'm going to end the video off again. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment, like the video, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.